Good morning. Welcome to the Mexican International Conference on Artificial Intelligence. My name is Nayeli Hernandez and I am a student of the Natural Language Laboratory at the Computer Research Center of the National Polytechnic Institute. And today I am glad to present my work entitled Aspect-Based Sentiment Analysis in Social Media, a Survey. The outline of the presentations consists of the following parts. We will start with introduction and explanation about what is sentiment analysis. Then we will review the architecture proposed for this work. After that, we will explore how to get or construct our data collection. We will look at several techniques for pre-processing text. Then we will review the steps to obtain aspects in a text and different techniques for classification. And finally, the conclusion of this work. Nowadays, the web allows users to provide their opinions about their likes or dislikes. Social media such as Twitter, Facebook or Instagram are the perfect place to extract information on any subject. Due to their versatility and variety of users who publish content, users on social media can write their opinions about products, share their experience of a service such as visiting a restaurant, a hotel or also opinions about politics. The opinions that are in social media become important because currently a lot of organizations use the analysis of public opinion on these media to make decisions or improve the popularity of a product or a service. The analysis of public opinion constitutes an essential task in the analysis of a person's behavior, which can be summarized as sentiment analysis. Liu et al. define that sentiment analysis or opinion mining is a computational study of people's opinions, appraisals, attitudes and emotions toward entities, individuals, issues, events, topics and their attributes. There are three levels of analysis which are document level, it classifies an opinion document like a product review as expressing a positive or negative opinion or sentiment. It considers the whole document as the basic information unit. Sentence level, it classifies individual sentences which constitute an entire document expressing a positive or negative opinion or sentiment. Aspect or entity level, the main idea is to break down the text into aspects, attributes or components in a review and then allocate each one a sentiment level. With this type of analysis, we get the most out of our data. It is important to mention that for this presentation, we will only talk about the aspect or entity level. The architecture proposed consists in four main models, which are the following. Data collection, where a specific set of opinions and review for social media will reside. Preprocessing, in which we are able to use several techniques to treat the data like tokenization, lower casing, or stemming. Aspect extraction, where we will extract the most important aspects, attributes, or components of a review. And classification, where we will use an supervised or unsupervised machine learning algorithm to fit a model with the objective of classifying the entities of a review into a positive, neutral, or a negative sentiment. I will explain each of these models with more detail on the next slides. For data collection, we are able to create a custom database with a specific topic using other applications or tools for retrieving the information. For example, using Twitter API in Python to find a specific topic like, in this slide, we search the words refugees in Germany and with the tool we retrieve the last 10 tweets and using tools like this API, we are able to create our own review database. We can also use an existing data collection on the web. There are countless websites when we can download that datasets collections, for example, from SNAP, which is a large network dataset collections that belongs to Stanford, that offers more than 50 large network datasets. It includes social network, web graphs, road, internet, citation, and communication networks. Also, we can use data collection offered by some libraries or toolkits, 
that is the case of the NLTK Toolkit or Scikit-Learn library for Python. Data preprocessing is one of the critical steps in any project. It includes cleaning and formatting the data before feeding into a machine learning algorithm, and the objective is to transform data into a more digestible form so that machine learning algorithms can perform better. For natural language processing, the preprocessing steps are comprised of the following tasks. Remove hyperlinks, Twitter, marks, and styles. Since we have a dataset collection from social media, we would like to remove some substrings commonly used on the platform, like the hashtags, retweet marks, and hyperlinks. For example, we have a tweet, my beautiful sunflower on a sunny Friday, and as we can see, it contains Twitter marks and hyperlinks. So after applying the process of removing these hyperlinks and hashtags, we obtain the next text in blue, in which we only keep the meaningful words and we remove those strange characters that do not provide us with valuable information and that could make our algorithm fail. Tokenizing the string to tokenize means to split the strings into individual words without blanks or tabs. In the example below, we obtain a list with the words that compose the original tweet. Removing stop words and punctuations. The next step is to remove stop words and punctuation. Stop words are words that don't add significant meaning to the text. We can see that the stop word list above contains some words that could be important in some contexts. This could be words like I, not, between, because, one, or against. You might need to customize the stop word list for some application. For the punctuation, we saw earlier that certain groups like the happy emoji and the ellipses should be retained when dealing with tweets because they are used to express emotions. In other contexts, like medical analysis, this should also be removed. Stemming is the process of converting a word to its most general form or stem. This helps in reducing the size of our vocabulary. Consider the words learn, learning, learned, and learned. All these words are stem from its common root learn. However, in some cases, the stemming process produces words that are not correct spellings of the root word. For example, happy and sunny, that is because it chooses the most common stem for related words. For example, we can look at the set of the words that comprises the different forms of happy, happy, happiness, and happier. We can see that the prefix happy is the more commonly used. Although classifying review text at the document level or at the sentence level is useful in many cases, it doesn't provide the necessary detail need for many other applications. A positive document about a particular entity doesn't mean that the author has positive opinions on all the aspects of the entity. Likewise, a negative document doesn't mean that the author dislikes everything. In a particular review document, the author writes both positive and negative aspects of the entity. Document and sentence sentiment classification doesn't provide such information. To obtain these details, we need to use aspect level. We use an example retrieved from a blog to illustrate the main task in the aspect extraction. The review says the following. I bought a phone and my girlfriend bought a Nokia phone yesterday. We called each other when we got home. The voice of my motor phone was unclear, but the camera was good. My girlfriend was quite happy with her phone and its sound quality. I want a phone with a good voice quality, so I probably will not keep it. For task 1, we should extract the entity expressions Motorola, Nokia and Moto and group Motorola and Moto together as they represent the same entity. For task 2, we should extract aspect expressions 
we can define the term aspect to denote both components and attributes. So in the example, the aspect will be camera, voice, and sound. And group voice and sounds together as they are synonymous representing the same aspect. For tax tree, we should find the holder of the opinion. In this case, it will be Big Cheese, the blog, out, blog author, and we should also find the time when the blog was posted, which is November 4. For task 4, we'll, we should find the sen that sentence 3 gives a negative opinion to the voice quality of the Motorola phone, but a positive opinion to its camera. For example, sentence 4 gives positive opinion to the Nokia phone as a whole and also its sounds quality. Sentence 5 simply expresses a positive opinion, but it does not. For task 5, we shall finally generate the following four opinion quintuples, where the aspect should be classified using a different technique in a positive or negative sentence sentiment. We have Motorola voice quality negative by Big Cheese on November 4. And Nokia voice quality positive by Big Cheese girlfriend in November 4. For classification, our main task is determining the orientation of opinion expressed on each aspect on a sentence. After we have extracted the aspect, we are able to apply techniques for classification, for example, using the lexicon-based approach that basically uses an opinion lexicon, like a list of opinion words and phrases, and a set of rules to determine the orientation of opinion in a sentence. It also considers opinion shifters and both clauses. The approach works as follows. Mark opinion words and phrases. Given a sentence that contains one or more aspects, this step mark, marks all opinion words and phrases in the sentence. Each positive word is assigned the opinion score of plus one, and each negative word is assigned the opinion score of minus one. Handle opinion shifters. Opinion shifters are words and phrases that can shift or change opinion orientation. Negation words like note, never, known, nobody, nowhere, neither, and cannot are the most common type. Handle both clauses. In English, but means contrary. A sentence containing but is handled by applying the following rule. The opinion orientation before but and after but are opposite to each other if the opinion on one side cannot be determined. Aggregating opinion. These steps apply an opinion aggregation function to the resulting opinion scores to determine the final orientation of the opinion on each aspect in the sentence. Let the sentence be S, which contain a set of aspects A1 to AM and a set of opinion words or phrases OW1 to OWN, with their opinion scores obtained from step 1, 2, and 3. The opinion orientation for each aspect A is determined by the following opinion aggregation function. The score for an aspect in S is equal to the sum of OW subscript J, where is an opinion word or phrase in S dot W double O divided by the distance between aspect A and an opinion word O W subscript J in S. The multiplicative inverse is used to give lower weights to opinion words that are far away from an aspect A. If the final score is positive, then the opinion on aspect A in S is positive. If the final score is negative, then the opinion on the aspect is negative. It is not neutral otherwise. Also, we are able to use other kind of algorithms like using a supervised or unsupervised machine learning algorithm. One of the most used on this case is applying a logistic regression 
using a naive base algorithm or a support vector machine. Also, we can use deep learning. In conclusion, for this presentation, the newest research paper has been reviewed. In particular, this work focuses on sentiment analysis research from an aspect-oriented perspective. In addition, we have proposed an architecture for sentiment analysis. Also, we explore different sources of where to obtain data and tools that can be used in sentiment analysis research. Finally, we want to emphasize on future development some suggestions such as planning and further refining the proposed techniques and dealing with some of the most common problems such as identifying in more detail the polarity of opinions and is also suggested the analysis of monitoring in real time the opinion of the customers. Here are the references that we use to create this presentation. And that's well that's all all for me. Thank you very much for your attention and on these links you can find much more information about our international team's research on this topic and now I am happy to answer any questions you may have.